Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here at the first in Michigan Northwest State Championship event with Team 10255, the RoboDucks from Zealand, Michigan. They've won two state championships in a row, and they're going for the three-peat. They certainly have the robot to do it, guys. This robot has an incredible intake and sorting mechanism, a consistent shooter, and a flipping mechanism you won't want to miss. Here with me to learn more, I have Elliot, Kara, Charlie, and Ian. Let's find out more on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. All right, Elliot, why don't you get us started? Let's talk about this intake and sorting mechanism you guys have developed for your robot. Okay, so first for sorting, what we would do to intake during autonomous, say our pattern is purple, green, purple. We, to sort it into purple, purple, green, shooting out, we would um, intake the first ball into the robot, then, so then, the intake second ball and put in the third ball and then reintake the second ball in and then shoot. So Elliot, really cool design you guys have going on here. Can you talk me through some of the iterations that you guys have seen? It looks like you're using this also for human player load. How does that work for you guys? So. At the start of the season, we went with a really big human loader. It was out to the front of our intake, and we found that it was impossible to intake off the wall. We made it smaller and also made it with these corners so that it was possible to intake from the corners. We also added this fin so that when you drop three balls in, you can it will auto-orient and be able to intake three balls. Really smart iteration there, Elliot. Thanks so much. I'm going to hand it over to Kara now. Kara, can you tell us a little bit more about the shooter, how you guys have been able to obtain such consistency? Yeah, so one thing that we did at the beginning of the season is we did some research on what shooter that we wanted. We figured out that we did not want to do a catapult because it was not as consistent as we wanted. We also figured out that a turret would be more complex than what we wanted and it would weigh more. So we ended up with a wheeled shooter that is just normal and has the um, he, the hamster wheel that leads into the shooter, which then fires it with our flywheel. And why do you have these, these extra flywheels on the side there? So these are the flywheel weights, and they help with the power of our flywheel. Very cool. Can you walk me through a little bit more of this hood design? How are you guys actually controlling the hood and then aiming it so that it can score? So one of our programming is that this hood can maneuver however that we, however where we are. So if we're in the middle of the big triangle on the field, this will automatically go up and go to the placement that we would need. That's really cool. And I think that Charlie wanted to talk a little bit more about that and some of the, the vision and the sensing you guys are doing this. Can you tell me what the RoboDocs do to achieve your performance? So every other team uses a limelight as we've seen in many of our matches. But when we start out with a limelight, it would freeze, it would not work. It, would always turn off and it could cause disconnections. So we messed around with it, still did work. So between our time at Fruitport and States, we switched out the limelight to this camera right here. And we did the same testing, it still didn't work. And we figured out it was with the shaking. So the shaking would come from the shooter right here and it would go all the way through and shake the camera. So we put these two rubber pads right here to stop that and it would kind of absorb the shaking and then this camera can lock on. So this camera, great thing about it is, is it helps us shoot everywhere and anywhere because it's connected to the distance. So when it sees the April tag from a certain distance, this uh, hood will go up, the shooter will go at a certain speed and will automatically go to that position. Impressive. Is there any other sensors that you guys are using on this robot to make to achieve the level of automation that you have? 
no other sensors really. All we have is this color uh, RGB indicator that would okay. connect to this so we know when it's green, when it's locked on, when it sees the April tags, but other than that, we don't use any sensors. Really cool, thank you, Charlie, I appreciate that. We're gonna hand it over to Ian now. Let's end this with a bang and talk about the flipping mechanism that you guys have. So one thing that makes this robot and our team really unique is this flipper mechanism that is our end game strategy. In the end game, we'll, at 15 seconds, we'll run over to the parking and we'll drop this plate down that'll be flat on the field. And our team will, our teammate will drive up onto this um, plate and then we will curl with their body weight. So it, it will lift us up. So we only take up like maybe two centimeters of that space of that 18 by 18 box. Really impressive. So I'm just curious, was this something you guys thought of at the beginning of the season or how did this really unique idea come to fruition? So we knew at the start of the season, we really wanted to get that 30 point park, but we were just putting up to, uh, ideas together. And then we finally came up with um, this kickstand or this metal plate. But one thing that we thought of before this was a kickstand, but that didn't work because it would, it was it would break, it would snap because it's 3D printed. Um, and then we tried this metal plate that was made out of another metal, and then that bent because our robot was weighed too much and that uh, metal was too weak. So we switched to this blue plated, plated steel, and that seems to hold our weight really well. Well, thank you so much, Ian, and the rest of the Robodocs for talking with us today. You guys have an engineering marvel here. Can't wait to watch it compete throughout the rest of the state championship. Hopefully you guys will qualify for the world championship once again. Thank you so much for all taking the time to watch us. My name is James for the Fun Robotics Network, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new six millimeter hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com robots.